Carers are an important part of the healthcare system. They save hundreds of millions of dollars by providing home services and improves the lives of the people they care for. But caring for someone with psychosis can be particularly difficult. She thought I was her enemy. I was putting her in hospital. I was the cause of her illness. Um, she didn't know that I was actually trying to do things to try and get her well or to keep her safe. When you've got psychosis, you may feel very suspicious about the outside world or what other people are doing or what other people's intentions or motives are. You may find the person that you're talking to, you think they're not telling you the truth. The first time my daughter experienced psychosis, I didn't really know what it was. I knew she was angry beyond comprehension. I knew she couldn't control that anger. I knew she couldn't calm herself down. I knew I had to get out of the way. I knew there was something terribly, terribly, terribly wrong. I think the worst moment was seeing her taken away by the police in the paddy wagon the first time, singing like a weech frightened child and not being allowed to go and comfort her or be with her on her journey to the hospital. Mm. That was and to remains to this day the most devastating feeling I've ever had in my life. We came from the idea that it was very stressful and difficult to look after someone in this situation. And it's particularly difficult because mental health problems are unbelievably stigmatised. And the shame can sort of extend to the rest of the family. You know, why would you want to marry someone who's got this in the family? There's all sorts of issues that it can bring up the family. So sometimes families, we, you know, just feel they have to keep it rather hidden. And so the families themselves lose social support, they lose anyone to talk to about it, and can feel very isolated in a very similar way to the, um, to the service users. I felt terrible fear, um, incredibly, incredible anxiety, and, and intense guilt because I somehow thought that I was responsible, that I'd done something wrong as a parent, that I hadn't managed my daughter well enough. Quite a lot of them will be clinically depressed themselves because of the caring role, because, how, because of how stressful it is. And that's any kind of carer. Up to, say, 40% have got clinical levels of depression. It's jolly hard work. Some carers are traumatised when you start to ask the question. Some of them are traumatised by what's happened both to themselves and the, and the service user. Um, some of them may be depressed. So there's a lot of untreated kind of morbidity for carers, um, which we've tended to kind of because of the focus on trying to help help the patient and help deal with sort of the acute emergencies and all the things that go on, carers are often sort of seen as just round the back. Carers need to take care of themselves because I believe that unless you're in good health and well educated, then you are of no help to the person you're looking after. Because carers have needs of their own to do with the caring role. Their needs are perfectly legitimate um, as well. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to impact on, on the confidentiality of the, of the service user at all. If someone's coming home to live with you, you need to be told about you know, what to expect and how to manage and, and what you're going to need in that. And it's that kind of input that I think that carers need to have. I needed a diagnosis, for one thing. I needed to understand her medication regime, to know what she was on and what her doses are and how often she should have her medication. I needed to know what the likelihood of recovery was with her. I needed to know what services were available for her on discharge from hospital as she, in the last 10 years, up until two years ago, had probably spent two months in hospital, three weeks out. Two months in, three weeks out for 10 years of her life. So. It was very important to me that she have some sort of backup when she got out of hospital. So I needed to know things like that that would help me help her. And you've also got the problem that for some service users they say, I don't want my care involved. So then even if decisions are intimately going to be directly affect the carer, um, then they're sort of left out of it. There's quite a lot of evidence now that having a carer is jolly helpful. It's, um, it means you're more likely to do a bit better with some of the psychological treatments, you're more likely to take medication, To it gives you a slightly bigger social network and your network plummets with things like psychosis. 
Um, and so, you know, they deserve, carers themselves deserve help with this role, but very rarely get it. You've got cost effectiveness analyses of doing the family work, you know, keeps people out of hospital. And one of the huge expenses of mental health services is hospital care or intensive care, even if it's not in hospital. Yes, by helping carers manage this in a way that works better for them, it, it also improves outcomes for the whole family. Look, I love her to bits. I love the bones of the child and I'm happy to support her in what I'm thinking is becoming her first journey into recovery. I mean, I'm very proud to see what she's doing and that she's managing so well, given what we've been through. Um, I'm her mum. It's a duty of love. I can't, I can't not do it. <laughs>